How's everyone doing? Good? Excited? Good, good. For you to be as excited by the end of the day, but uh, it's great to see you all back in person. Uh, I'm Gabriele Columbro, I'm Executive Director of Finos, and I'm very excited to invite you, to welcome you to the sixth Open Source in Finance Forum. Um, last year we were able to do our conference uh, in the sort of two weeks between Delta and Omicron. Uh, this year, I'm glad to see folks back in person. And we changed our venue. Um, we thought we were a little bit too hipster the last couple of years, so we you know, went back to a more serious Wall Street type uh, um, scenario. Uh, but this is an exciting year uh, for us, and I hope uh, you're gonna find it as well. We've been experiencing a lot of growth, not just Finos, but open sourcing financial services. And we really think we are at the cusp of being able to build um, the new generation of financial applications on, on open source. Um, so hopefully throughout the day you learn uh, more about our projects. I see many new faces, many old faces. Uh, not old as in age, of course. Um, um, so in case you were wondering, this is the sixth open source in finance forum. You're not seeing double. We have renamed the conference earlier in the year. Uh, in a reflection that we, uh, uh, partly that the strategy of open source is much more understood in, in finance, and so we don't really have to message as much at strategy level, and really we are becoming the recognized umbrella for any open source project in financial services. Um, and that's especially, I showed this slide for those of you who were in London at our, uh, uh, earlier this year, um, it's especially interesting to see from where we started. Um, you know, it, it's almost unbelievable looking five years ago when we were 30 known, very diverse folks <laughs> in a room. Um, and even more uh, amazing if you think that, you know, that's who was gonna, who was pitching this. I mean, I really have to do something about, you know, my appearance. And <laughs> hopefully it looks a little better. But you know, it's about the substance, so um, look, today uh, we are uh, uh, 66 members strong. We have over, actually, 50 projects uh, in the last few days uh, across really all financial services. I think this is a huge testament as to the value of what this community can bring to the table. Um, I wanna start with thanking our sponsors. We have today, uh, over 10 sponsors uh, really making this possible. So uh, a huge shout out to all of our uh, open source and finance forum sponsors today. A um, couple of housekeeping notes before we get started. Uh, you can build your own schedule. We have five tracks, help me out, five or six. We have our project expos. There's a lot of material. Um, you might wanna pick and choose. Um, and then help us make some noise. Engaging with us helps promoting the message and the visibility of all of you know, our activities. And finally, take a look at the health and safety requirements and the events code of conduct. And with that, I wanna welcome on stage our Chair Emeritus, Dolph Katz, is Managing Director of Morgan Stanley, has been a force behind the foundation since the very beginning. Dove, can you give us a state of the community? Thanks, everyone, and uh, thanks uh, for joining us at the Open Source and Finance Forum, or as I like to call it, FDC3Con. <laughs> so. uh, let's start off with some opening remarks. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Open Source and Finance Forum. No, sorry, forget it. I'm not going to go for that. But. By the way, these are very credible remarks, and if you do use them, uh, I could have just left, and it's, it's pretty, pretty decent. So a lot, a lot to say about that in a different session, but really illustrating the power of open source this week. So from a bold vision five years ago, and Gab brought it up, um, I posted this in the summer, I think, uh, cleaning up a desk and found the old pitch book that uh, Gab showed that uh, lovely picture of himself presenting in the first conference um, to where we are today. It's clear that Finos is the place for us in the industry to have uh, as an ecosystem to collaborate. There is no question about it. So I want to give you a state of the community, right? Finos is growing fast. 
the activity in open source and financial services is growing fast. And there doesn't see, seem to be a limit to the amount of collaboration that can take place, both within us as a group of companies in Finos, but also in the, in the broader Linux Foundation ecosystem. So in a few minutes, Gab is going to give more details. But I want to share with you a couple of pieces of information to highlight both the level of the community growth that we've had, the high state of the community, and also the testament that this is really providing value to our organizations. So this year, we want to start with our members. So this year, we've, uh, we've, we've had our record number of members join the foundation. And it's not so much the number of members that joined, is it is the diversity of the different types of members. We've got members in the sell side, the buy side. We have technology providers. We have payment processors. We have regulation technology uh, related companies. And this is, this is a true testament to the, the breadth of different opportunities available for us to collaborate in the industry. And the list goes on. And this is, this is not a complete list as well of what's uh, in the pipeline. Uh, some may close in the next week or two, so I'll let Gab announce those as they happen. Um, and now let's move on to, uh, while members are great, right, activity is what drives the value. And so we'll talk a little bit about contribution, and then we'll talk about consumption uh, as well, adoption. So contribution, we've seen massive growth. You'll see in some of the presentations why I was kind of joking about this being FTC 3 con. There's a lot going on there. Um, but right now, contributor strength is very high. The amount of contributions from financial services still limits the total contribution, but the top ten contributors are banks. Uh, and that's very impactful because it's showing this is not just a group of them that's trying to pitch products to us. This is a bunch of us that is about our organizations sharing and contributing with each other. And we also had a bunch of new projects to talk about that in a minute as well. But as much of those contributions are cool, we can all brag about them and share with, the, you know, share with our technology community, it's the adoption that makes a difference. And the adoption we're talking about, uh, you know, teams using these products to create a lot of value. A couple of interesting ones here to mention. Perspective uh, from J.D. Morgan uh, has a uh, web assembly, high performance, uh, data visualization library, massive growth uh, this year and since its inception, like 30 years old. And uh, we also have FTC3, which we heard about a lot today as well. Uh, a lot of growth there with the standard being released. I'll let Rob talk about it in more detail. But it is, it is another huge example of major value provided. Uh, and I know that that is so one of the key drivers is the hand buy side and sell side together. It makes me very excited to see that stuff happening. New projects, a lot of them. And this is the, this is the uh, mostly complete list. But we're 11 projects, I mean, the list grows beyond that. And similar to the membership, this is not just about numbers. This is also about the variety of projects that join. We have projects focusing on some of our core fitness offerings, like FTC3. And, and we have uh, you know, similar ones with, with uh, you know, data visualization. But we also have new spaces which have really grown in the red tech space. Uh, and two I like to have. The first one that I'm seeing a lot of Stanley, we just released the uh, the liquidity coverage ratio, which is the first uh, fully, fully functional implementation of US liquidity coverage ratio using the LCR using complete Finos technology and open source. And that's a collaboration with us that's probably about a couple months here. And, and then I also want to talk about the, uh, the, 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 the new projects coming out that, like the legend the modeling ecosystem, we're going to hear about that, the kind of a model that is a really exciting new area you know, we're really seeing the technology to take hold. In, uh, and that's a big theme this year today. So, talking about CEO for a minute, we're going to hear from you know, the, the industry bodies that uh, they'll come up to give keynotes as well from each of them, is the ICMA. But this is a very big deal for us. So, for the first time, we have the three industry groups getting together, creating a, a agreement to collaborate and decide between the open source product. They are Seeing the value in developer first way of thinking about the problems they want to solve, standardizing a common domain model, uh, and they are using. So there's two elements of that that are really well highlighted. One, that they're taking the open source plunge, and that is in and of itself a big milestone to see trade associations. And the other is that their first call after signing their agreement with each other in the library was the Venom saying, hey, this is the place we need to host a neutral repository that's a collaborative OS library. 
And that validates both of the value of open source and the value of Finos in the of services. So it's really exciting. I share my conviction with community fair strong. We've got a lot of people here. I think there's a record turnout. I was looking at the numbers right before. I think we've we lost some people. There's a record turnout, record registration since we started this. But more than that, it's a deep program that we see today. A lot of people in this room are going to have a very hard time deciding where to go. The amount of content today is unlike any, any of the conferences that I've ever been to, but the globalization. And so I encourage you to split up, take notes, figure out which you There's a lot going on. But I'm really excited to hand it over to Beyond and uh, to Rob and Thank you so much. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> um, thank you, though. Um, so, I know that they again are actually with us since the beginning, it's been really a great driving force. Uh, the following time, thank you, and I'm business. We're really excited. So, we have a couple of exciting announcements, and I'm going to share with you um, what's going on and looking forward. Uh, what we expect in 2023 and beyond. And, you know, the timeline is we're just getting started. Uh, because the reality of not just for it has been growing fast. Uh, but maybe the movement of open source and financial services, you know, about five years ago, you know, we had very different conversations now in terms of, you know, the size of the problem and the breadth of a project. But maybe, you know, you wouldn't get open source and money on the table. You wouldn't get, you know, a nature covered in your uh, uh, in finance place. You can have regulators. Across the world, and then influential institutions to engage in our issues to better collaborate and you know, promote transparency and standardization. So, um, this is not just happening in fears. So, some of you might remember last year we launched our first state of open source and financial services survey, and we are excited today. I don't know. We're excited to, uh, today to announce the second state of open source and financial services survey. Uh, and you might wonder, so what's the end? You the same announcement that we did last year, just in the date. Um, but the reality is that thanks to all of our uh, partners and like James Foundation Research, we now have, you know, year over year, we have a competitive information. Uh, it's the financial research. And the trends are really interesting. As I said, this is not just about Phoenix, but a catalyst for open source in the industry, but we are seeing across the board financial institutions allowing and encouraging that developers not only to consume, but finally to contribute to open source. And this really matches with the qualitative um, you know, information that we gathered this year. I can count already over 20 financial institutions who have rolled out an open source program office this year. And I'm not going to spoil the whole panel that follows me uh, uh, with this survey, uh, uh, with talking about the survey. Uh, but the reality is that when you have an OSPO, you're much more likely to get value and to uh, uh, be able to engage in open source safely and efficiently. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. Again, sorry for stealing uh, <clears throat> the next panel, Thunder. Uh, but commits are growing across the board. This is not just in finance. This is, again, globally. Uh, we work with our Platinum member GitHub to pull out these numbers. This type of growth is only the beginning um, because the firms, again, across the whole value chain are seeing value in uh, uh, open source. And one of the values that they're seeing and they think they should engage in open source more for is improving security. Um, I'm sure it's not lost on you that we lived in a post log for shell era. Many of you have dealt with it um, throughout the year. We have a really interesting session today from the Sonatype CTOs, Brian Fox, uh, uh, which is you know, an authority in this field. And I actually want to say something. I think this industry has stepped up when it comes to responding to Log4j in two major ways. 97% um, of financial institutions fixed their Log4j three days after uh, um, the patch was released. And that talks to the consumption side of the house. You need to have professional consumption in place 
Uh, this is one of the industries that have the highest risk uh, uh, involved. But on the other side, we have seen institutions engaging not only in finance, but upstream in projects like the Open Source Security Foundation, really starting to understand that it takes a village to secure our open source supply chain. Uh, this is something that will continue investing as finance, and I encourage you to do the same as members. Last spoiler here. Um, as I said, ultimately, this growth is driven by a much higher perceived value, even in the last 12 months. And again, much of this is related to having a structured internal organization like an OSPO that helps, um, you know, directing traffic and helps, you know, bubbling up the value at the executive and strategy level. What kind of value? Uh, I want to be clear here. We have learned as a vertical foundation that open source doesn't deliver value just, and I don't mean uh, as a limitation here, a technology and IT value. You know, your typical cost savings, developer and talent development, uh, vendor locking prevention. I think we're all familiar with those, you know, beautiful uh, side effects of open source. But we are seeing value being delivered across the whole value chain. And this is going to be a theme that I hope comes very clear today. We have our project expos, again, another spoiler, um, to really show you how our projects are used in production in improving time to market, in co directly connecting market uh, uh, counterparts, in improving your uh, regulatory efficiency, your regulatory implementations. And of course, as Dov hinted to, being a neutral place for intellectual property that disintermediates either of you and creates a true commons that we can all invest in. But it all starts with maturity. I hinted to that. Uh, the value and the ROI that you can get out of open source is wildly dependent on uh, your internal maturity. Um, there are certainly things that you can do by consuming and evaluating, but really the full value is unleashed when you're able to contribute. So today, to my second announcement, we're happy to announce that we are rolling out an open source maturity model that was uh, built in collaboration with our gold member Wipro uh, uh, that really helps you assess your, organization's, your organizational maturity when it comes to open source across many different dimensions, from strategy to management to consumption. Um, it is a survey, it's online, it's free. Uh, uh, we would like to start building not only a base that can help your organization grow, meaning not only will assess where you are, but also recommend how can you move forward, but really a better picture of where the industry is as far as maturity goes. So you got a cute, the cute QR code there. Uh, you can point to it, take the survey right now. Um, I want to switch gears here, and I'm definitely going long. So let me switch to a fast gear. Um, the, a trend that I'm seeing this year is that finally we're seeing fintechs waking up to this idea of commercial open source uh, or, or using open source as part of the go-to-market and business model. Um, the article on the left is from Andreessen Horowitz. If you haven't read it, I suggest you take a look. Uh, I'm glad they finally aligned to the message. Um, um, but really, this is an important element because we need their participation and even their commercialization of our open source projects to really create the virtuous cycle. You know, we start from project, we have commercial entities commercializing it, and you know, largely if they're based on our projects, they will likely reinvest in growing our community, whether it's by developer time or uh, uh, contributions. And look, don't get me wrong, there are some examples uh, of companies that are starting this way. I personally am involved in a few of them. Um, and it's exciting. Uh, I think there's a huge potential to really start creating building blocks that are not just uh, available in the open, but they provide professional support. Um, and on this, I think one of the main factors, though, that I want you to be aware um, is the concept of open washing. How many of you know the word open washing? Yeah, not that many. So I keep seeing in the industry a conflation of the word open. 
Um, there's open banking, open finance. They're very appropriate users of that word, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I continue to see the word open source being uh, overloaded um, in a way that really has nothing to do with open source. Uh, and I think one of the roles of the foundation that we can play is making sure that for you as consumers, we are a trusted entity where you know that if something is in Finos, is truly open source, is an under open source license, is developed under an open, open governance. Uh, which brings me to my next presenter, uh, which is our senior technical architect, Rob Moffat, who's actually going to talk what we are doing in uh, such a mature standard like FDC3 and what roles foundation can play for you. Welcome, Rob. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, so, yes, it's really exciting here to be stood here in New York. Uh, and to tell you, I've got two interesting pieces of news on FDC3. So um, I'm going to give you a quick recap, but it sounds like pretty much everyone knows what this is. Uh, FDC3 is a standard for desktop interop. Uh, so if you're a trader, you might have a whole bunch of apps. You want all those apps to work together, so you can say, show me a graph of this stop, stock and work, move from one app to another. And this is what FDC3 solves. So this slide here shows the basic parts. We've got the, the spec on the left. And in London, we announced the new version of the FDC3 spec, which is 2.0. So we have two versions of that. We have various vendors uh, providing desktop agents, which kind of act as the postman between all the different apps that I've talked about. And there are various uh, vendors, and we also have FTC3 Sale now, which is a Finos project, which is an open source desktop agent. And we have app directories as well, and the apps. And an app directory being a, like a collection of, 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 of apps that you're going to use. Um, so there's a lot of bits of the puzzle here. There's a lot going on. And one of the problems that people have is, how do you keep these things in line? How do you know that everyone's going to build stuff that works across this suite? And so, as a user, you want to know that if you're using an app, it's going to work in your desktop agent. Um, or if you're a, an app writer, you want to know that it's going to work on all the diff different desktop agents. Um, and again, we've got different versions of the spec. Do you know it's going to work on the different versions of the spec? So how do we solve this problem? Um, how do we align all these together? And so um, we've been working hard on the FDC3 1.2 and 2.0 desktop agent conformance programs. Uh, we announced them in the summer. And today, I'm, I'm really pleased to say that you know, five months later, we actually have the first 1.2 conforming desktop agents. Um, uh, and we're going to announce those later on today uh, in the awards part of the program. But uh, the way this works is that, effectively, the conformance program the, the, is, a, is a suite of apps that talk to each other and sort of exercise that whole part of the stack. So, so yes, um, we, we're also very close to having 2.0 conformance testing working. We'll be looking at that at the start of 2023. Uh, so second. Uh, bit of news I want to talk about is the Finos FDC3 app directory. So this is something, um, yeah, as I said on the previous slide, there is lots of different app directories out there. Every different installation of FDC3 is a different directory. Um, and what we wanted to do is provide a common one, a place where people can start. Uh, and to fill this gap, we've uh, created directory.fdc3.finos.org. Uh, and this is kind of a uh, a seed, if you like. We want to try and get a collection of apps together, put them in the open, and, and allow people to use them. So um, at the moment, we have uh, Chart IQ, Symphony, NextJ, uh, Connectify, um, Adaptable, and obviously the FDC3 conformance framework. We've got all of those in the Finos App Store. Um, so yeah, check it out. You can have a, write a PR if you have an app you want to add. We're hoping that this will act as a seed and people will start to contribute apps, maybe from behind their firewalls. They'll, we'll get some apps from, from some of the big FDC3 users out there. Um, and yes, if you want to see this in action, just to, to plug a talk today, um, Nick Kolber and Seb Barrick will be doing a presentation of, 
uh, the Theonos FDC3 sale desktop agent later on today at 3.15. And that actually uses the Finos app directory to provide all its apps. So it's all, it all joins together. So uh, yeah, please come along to that. And uh, yes, I think that's basically it. Those two things, directory and conformance. Thank you very much. Back to, back to you, Gab. Thank you, Rob. Um, yeah, so you got to stick together, uh, stick with us until the end of the day to know who is actually certified. Suspense. Um, and so before I wrap, with 15 seconds left, um, I, what's, what's on the horizon? What, what are we looking forward to? Besides continuing investing on you know, supply chain security and providing the highest standards of security and compliance to our projects. We are not oblivious to the fact that we want to produce financial services grade open source. Uh, I think there's a lot uh, uh, for us to do. Um, first of all, we continue to expand globally. You've seen our logos. We think there's a huge potential for open source to build bridges, not only within the United States, but of course across the different regions. Uh, I recently have taken a second role as the general manager of Linux Foundation Europe. So if you are interested in collaborating across the Atlantic, this is a really great place uh, to do so. Um, I talked about the importance of creating a commercial ecosystem or fostering an open source, open core, SaaS, services, whatever business model you have that is based on open source, because this is going to drastically accelerate our growth and the support that many of organizations that are maybe not ready just yet to consume open source directly can interact. This is a huge opportunity for all of you here, whether you are a services company, a vendor company, a fintech company, um, there's a the first mover advantage here. This is just the beginning. Uh, and then finally, uh, we'll hear it more later in the day, but we're starting to really onboard projects that can make a drastic change as I said, not only at IT level, but truly as to how this industry, the very functioning of this industry. Last year we announced an open uh, digital currency initiative that we'll be following up on this year. Of course, the, the CDM onboarding, that is something that touches across the board. Um, and again, with my Linux Foundation hat on, we're seeing even collaborations that are across industries. The Open Wallet Foundation is bringing together not only finance, but automotive, healthcare. This is the convening power that we can, you know, put at your disposal uh, uh, with Finos and the Linux Foundation. So I think it's gonna be exciting, but it's gonna be uh, depending on you and your contributions. So as we look to today, there's something for everyone. Uh, I'm actually very excited that this year we have an OpenJS in finance. Uh, track uh, with some amazing speakers from our sister foundation, uh, OpenJS. Uh, we have FDC3Con um, and, and so many other uh, uh, great, you know, hopefully inputs for your 2023. Uh, we have a roundtable uh, for our OSPO folks. Uh, uh, talk to James McLeod, our director of community, if you'd like to be involved. Uh, stick, stick around for the awards and for the closing reception. And yes, we do have an after party. And I know some of you have received some unofficial uh, invitation. This is the one and only Finos after party. Uh, so make sure that you stick around or that you register to actually show up. Uh, as I wrap, full three minutes late. Uh, this is the, sh the slide that I showed in London uh, uh, two months ago, three months ago. Uh, July, I guess. Um, it all starts from you. Uh, but it struck me that it's not just about you sharing your opinions today and you sharing where do you want this community to go. Uh, but open source gives you a way to actually turn those opinions into actions. Raise an issue, raise a pull request, even if it's not code. Um, your input in terms of use cases and strategies and areas that are a priority for you next year will greatly help to focus our direction and, you know, in turn deliver more value back to you. So thank you so much. I hope you'll have uh, a great time today and let me bring in the next speakers. <clears throat>